Hello, and welcome to Our Lady Seat of Wisdom College's video presentation of the Small Music Ensemble, directed by Dr. Richard Heinsley. In a moment, Dr. Heinsley will introduce the program. But I would like to take a minute to thank Dr. Heinsley for the wonderful work he has done at Seat of Wisdom College over the last three years. He has taught chorus, he has directed Scola, he has taught any number of voice lessons, instrument lessons, and offered some fabulous concerts and recitals over these three years. His offerings have greatly enriched the lives of our students, our faculty, our staff, and the broader community of Barry's Bay and beyond. Dr. Hinesley's energy, enthusiasm, incredible talent and skill have been great blessings at Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. Unfortunately, Dr. Hinesley has decided to step down from his position. He will be focusing his energies on his work in the Toronto area where he lives. We want to thank Dr. Hinesley deeply for what he has given us over these three years, along with his wife Lourdes. Your contribution will be remembered with great fondness and great appreciation. So now, please enjoy the rest of the program. And once again, thank you, Dr. Heinsley. Greetings to all the supporters of Seed of Wisdom College. Today, it is my great pleasure to introduce the virtual ensemble of Seed of Wisdom College. I am Dr. Richard Heinsley. I have thoroughly enjoyed teaching this dedicated group of musicians, Emily Baker on violin from British Columbia, Julia Close on piano from the United States, and Bridget Oliver from Barry's Bay, Ontario, singing soprano and alto, as well as playing the piano and the organ. The virtual concert starts with the Easter hymn, Ye Sons and Daughters, going way back to the 17th century. We have Bridget singing soprano and alto, as well as playing the piano, Emily on violin, and Julia on piano. For this song, the ensemble recorded themselves with video, adding an additional challenge. Next, we have Mozart's Piano Sonata number no. 2 for four hands, with Julia on secondo and Bridget on primo. For the hymn to St. Joseph, we have again Bridget singing, with Julia on the piano and Emily on violin. The Brahms Violin Sonata features Emily on violin and Bridget on piano. For our closing prayer, we have the hymn God of Grace and God of Glory. As Bridget sings, we pray with Harry Emerson Fostick from Buffalo, New York, who penned these words in 1930, that God may grant us wisdom and grant us courage for the living of these days. Bridget also plays the beautiful Cassava organ of St. Hedrick's Church in Barry's Bay, built in 1942. Julia added the piano part and Emily the violin.
The goal of this course has been to produce virtual musical performances. When we go on YouTube and watch performances of virtual choirs and musical ensembles, it all looks easy and effortless. Not until we try to produce something on our own do we realize how much time and effort goes into such a project. Let me elaborate on the process. As with the preparation for any musical performance, the first task is to master the music itself on your instrument and to agree on an interpretation among the musicians of the ensemble. With in-person concerts, as long as you can control your nerves, that completes the process. At that point, you're ready to walk on stage and the audience can enjoy your performance while you feel the vibes of an enthusiastic audience, hopefully. In case of the virtual performance, only half the work is accomplished at this point. Now the recording process starts. The group will designate a lead person who will be the first one to record her performance. According to the requirements of each piece, the choice of the lead person depends on which part forms the backbone of the music or who is most influential for the interpretational aspects of the piece. For example, with the Brahms Violin Sonata, Emily first recorded her interpretation of the piece because the violin really takes a lead role in the many fluctuations of tempo and sound characteristics required for this piece. However, as the piano provides the rhythmical backbone, Bridget then recorded the lead while listening to Emily's recording. Bridget would then email her recording back to Emily, who then would listen to the piano accompaniment a few times to get used to all the intricacies. And finally, while listening to the piano accompaniment recording through the headphones, she would make her final recording. As this piece is so long, we divided it into three sections, putting together one section at a time. Once Emily completed the final recording of the first section, she combined it on the computer software with the piano accompaniment. This process revealed that there were a couple of places where it proved difficult to stay together, so Bridget would re-record those few bars to allow Emily to better fit her part with it, and so on with each section. With live in-person performances, we had the advantage of seeing each other and reading the body movements, the movements of the violin bow and the hands at the piano. We even develop a sense of each other's breathing to help us stay together. But in the virtual ensemble, that is missing, so it is more difficult. With the restrictions due to the pandemic, we did not have access to a well-equipped recording studio, regardless of budget considerations. So mostly we had to rely on the built-in recorder of the cell phones. We also had tuning issues with the organ being pitched slightly lower than the pianos and the pianos hundreds of miles apart without access to a piano tuner. So it is obvious that all three of the participants Julia, Bridget, and Emily have put in way more time and effort than I expected, and certainly more than was required for the course. As musicians, we are missing the in-person music making, but we are fortunate to have all this amazing technology available to us. I keep wondering how it must have been during the Spanish flu outbreak 100 years ago when none of these things were available. Now, some of you may be wondering, why don't we just play music together over Zoom? Such as so many meetings are held over Zoom or similar softwares. Unfortunately, the technology is not quite there yet because of the lag in the internet. It still takes something like half a second for the sound to travel back and forth through the internet and for making music together that is like an eternity. So it's not possible.
closing, I want to sincerely thank Bridget, Julia, and Emily for their amazing dedication to this project, as well as for providing the music for the play Murder in the Cathedral that was produced earlier in this semester. A special thank you also to Professor Frederick Duquette, who combined the various pieces into the video for this virtual concert. Many thanks to Seed of Wisdom College for supporting these projects. And finally, I want to thank all of you for listening and watching and for supporting our college. Wishing you all the best and God's blessings. This is Richard Heinze from Richmond Hill, Ontario. Thank you.